Confused about what the heck Lekka or Lechuza is? I got you covered, Plant Friends. Bloom and grow, YouTube show. Plant Friends, if you've been subscribed to the show for, you know, really any amount of time, I think you'll know that over the last year, I've been experimenting with the semi-hydro or passive hydroponic lifestyle. That means planting plants, not in soil. It's been super interesting. It's kind of a craze that you either are into or you have no idea what the hell is going on. And that was me a year ago when I first interviewed Kay from In Rooted Love on semi-hydro 101. After my conversation with Kay, I got really curious. I did a few plants set up in LECA in semi-hydro. You can check the video out because I followed the whole journey. And the whole process of just experimenting with LECA and semi-hydro has been super fun. It's really piqued my curiosity and it's just kind of kept me growing and curious as a plant parent. So Kay recently did a full second podcast on Semi-Hydro 201. So it's like a little bit more advanced than the first podcast we did. And something she talked about was the fact that she's using Lechuza now in her passive hydroponic setups in addition to Lekka. I had no idea what the heck Lechuza was. So I asked Kay if she would do a little demonstration for us on what Lechuza is versus what Lekka is and how to pot up a plant in Lechuza and how to pot up a plant in Lekka, and she totally did. So without further ado, here's Kay walking me through the potting up process. Popping in here, in my sweats in a different outfit because we planned this after I recorded this video, but Kay and I have decided to do a really fun giveaway that we're hosting on my account on Instagram at Bloom and Grow Radio. So Kay is actually giving away two cuttings of the plant that you see her propagate and enough Lekka and Pawn for you guys to do your own experiment and try semi-hydro in both media on your own. So after you watch this video, head over to Bloom and Grow Radio Instagram and go follow In Rooted Love, Kay's account, um, and participate in the giveaway. Okay. <laughs> Kay, thank you for being my expert for Lechuza Pawn versus semi-hydro. So can you show us the difference between, I like to say semi-hydro is like Cocoa Puffs and Pawn mm -hmm. is like, gravel. So can you show us the difference yeah. in the two medias that we're talking about today? Yeah. So here's Lekka right here. They just look like Cocoa Puffs. They're these cute little circles. Some people spheres, say Cocoa Puffs. Some people say chocolate covered raisins. Some people say yeah. like malted milk balls. Oh, that's a good one. Yeah. They're just little clay balls. So mm. that's it right there. And then we've got Lechuza Pond which is that right there. So it looks like gravel. Um, it's just a nice little mixture of uh, lava rock, pumice, and zeolite mixed in with a little bit of slow release fertilizer. Kind of like fruity pebbles. If we're doing yes, like a <laughs> muted fall toned fruity pebble. Yes, I love it. <laughs> so, um, okay. So you have... On our podcast episode, we talk about the different setups that you use, the different plants that you pot up in these two different medias. What about the pot setups? Can you talk to me about how you're potting up pond versus how you're potting up LECA? Yeah, for sure. So the concept is still the same. You're going to have a water reservoir um, and you're going to have an inner pot. Um, and then, you know, for me, like I've kind of transitioned over from using net pots and reservoirs to using self-watering pots. It's just kind of made my life a little bit easier. Okay. Um, so when I'm, when I'm potting up with LECA, um, I'm okay with using pots like this. So what it is, is just a self-watering pot. It's got this platform that you can see has holes in the bottom. It's got mm -hmm. these little feet here that also have slits, which allow contact with the LECA and the water reservoir to help with that capillary action. Um, and that just kind of, that sits in here um, and then you just plant everything in there. There isn't a drainage hole or plug on here. So when you are doing flushes, um, it gets a little tricky, but <laughs> you wanna just hold your hand over everything and kind of like slowly tip it oh, to okay. get the flush. Now, when I'm using uh, Lechuza Pond, I like to use things that are a lot more similar to the Lechuza system because they do have their own pots. Um, so what I opt to use are self-watering pots with a removable inner pot. Um, just, so just for a comparison, they're different. One's an actual pot and the other one's just a platform. Okay. Um, so this is a removable pot and you know you can just pull it out 
you can do your flushes just with this here and then you can stick it right back in here um, which is your outer pot where your reservoir will be um, some of the like this pot up here because it's so big and it's got a trailing plant in it mm -hmm. um, i've actually opted to use something that has a drainage plug right at the bottom so when i do those flushes i just pull that plug and then hold it in the shower or have my husband hose it down let it flush through and then plug that sucker back up and then it goes back up there wow that's super smart and so do you for the pond are you using that internal pot because the pond is so much smaller so it's going to go everywhere is that the, it, is that why yeah so i have i've tried using pond in like those netted pots uh that we talked about uh, during our first chat and it kind of makes a bit of a mess at first until everything kind of gets settled in but you can use those netted pots it's mm -hmm. fine i just prefer not to um, and like i said it's these self-watering pots have just made my life so much easier yeah we'll have <laughs> so to link to i've them. kind of opted to <laughs> go and use these instead but, um but yeah the biggest thing is just making the flushes a lot easier and with pond you know it's really it's just tough to hold them and then kind of tip it over when you've got all these tiny little granules to try and keep in place. Totally. And so you could probably put the LECA in that double potted self-watering as well, right? Oh yeah, absolutely. I've got some okay. plants that are in these double pots that are also in LECA. Yeah. I feel like that's like the, so easy. So what are best practices for potting up LECA, a plant in LECA and a plant in PON? Uh, if it can go in LECA, put it in LECA. Okay. Pond is just, <laughs> it's first, it's, it's really hard to come by. Like every time I check online, it's always sold out. Okay. Um, so I just don't want to get too used to using Pond, but it's also, you know, it's a lot more expensive compared to LECA mm -hmm. when you're looking at like price per, per pot. Um, LECA definitely goes, uh, you know, a long way. Um, but there are a few plants that I am very strict about planting only in pond, um, and that includes Rosalis, any other epiphytic jungle cacti, um, and anthuriums, as well as my heavyweight um, Hoyas. So anything that's big and trailing that just needs a little bit of uh, like density to kind of hold it in place, then I, you know, I definitely opt to use pond for that. But like our all my favorite, other Hoyas, yes. Like our favorite compacta. Hoya compacta, yeah. Yes, yes, yeah. That definitely all my compactas are in pond just because I've tried growing compacta in Lekka and potting it up in Lekka. It's possible, but I mean, I was frustrated, um, and I was like, if I can make this easier for myself, I'm going to do it. So pond it is. <laughs> How would you feel about giving us a little tutorial and showing us uh, one of each? Well, I mean. I have the stuff, so let's do it. Okay, perfect. <laughs> well, let's start let's with Lekka first, it. since that's okay. that's our, our tried and true, my tried and true. I'm looking at the first yes. plant I potted in Lekka with oh, you, inspired by I'm so you. Happy. Yes. I love that it's like kind of, you know, over the pot now and doing that I know. sweet little hook. Oh, it's, it's my so leaning bad. pilea and my orchid. The original plant babies that set me on my semi hydro That's amazing. Journey. Anyway, back to you. <laughs> yes, I love seeing passive hydro success. <laughs> I think it's awesome. All right, so I am going to use, uh, this is a six inch self-watering pot. Um, and this is the one with the platform that I like to call. Um, and I have here, whoop, my pre-rinsed Lekka. Love Always it. want to rinse your balls, guys. You don't want, like, rinse your you don't balls. want dusty, dirty balls. Rinse your balls. So <laughs> first things first, I just like, <laughs> I like to just fill in um, the bottom portion of the pot just so that uh, you don't have the roots directly on that platform yet. So, you know, just about, oh, I guess you can't really see it, but just a nice even layer at the bottom. I'll probably add just a little bit more of that. Um, and then what I have here, uh, which is kind of, it's kind of fake, right? Because like, um, one of our listener questions was about a, a marble, marble pothos queen. on the podcast. Yeah. yeah. So this is actually my very first epiprenum. Um, and I just, I love the variegation on it. So I figured, eh, why not? Let's do it. Um, and in the past, you know, I've seen pothos, epiprenum 
Pranams, they do really great in passive hydro. So mm -hmm. I'm pretty, I'm pretty excited about it. So what I've done here is I've already cleaned it up. Um, what you want to do is try and get as much of the organic media off as you can. You'll see here that there's still a little bit of soil on the roots, but because this portion of the roots will probably sit towards the top of the leka. I'm not too concerned about it. It's the stuff that's farther down, that's closer to the reservoir that we really want to just, you know, get squeaky clean mm -hmm. um, as I'm over here pulling off other stuff. So once you have the leka in there, just, you know, covering that bottom, then you want to just kind of fill in your pot with all these gorgeous, it's like still in its form, which is great, actually. This will make it a lot easier. Um, so you kind of just like take this whole thing, mm -hmm. stick it in there, and then you're just going to fill in with LECA. You always want to do this like on top of a mat or something to like catch all the LECA because it just kind of goes all over the place. So we'll just fill in all this open space. And then I'm going to quote you from your YouTube video when you did your first conversion and <laughs> you want to shake it like a Polaroid picture. <laughs> just classy, you know, I'm just not, nothing but class on the Bloom and Grow YouTube show. <laughs> I mean, that was my favorite part of that whole video. I was like, oh my gosh, yes, thank you for using that reference. Oh, that's hilarious. Shake it like yeah, a Polaroid. Yeah, you definitely... <laughs> I feel you like definitely I just want to get in all that. So you're then yeah. going into the middle of the plant and getting Lekka in the root, in the root ball, in the yeah. root Yeah, okay. you want to just get it everywhere. Um, so kind of just, you know, shake things up. I like to give it a little tap tap, mm -hmm. work things around. And you'll see that the Lekka will settle in between all those roots. Um, and you'll just want to keep filling it in. And then one last thing I like to do, both with Lekka and Con, is to take, do I have it here? No, I guess not. Well, we're going to use my tongs. Um, just take any kind of stick and just draw little small circles in there to help that Lekka move in between all okay. those roots again. To set and it then, um, yeah. And then what I like to do for the first reservoir fill is just use uh, Super Thrive um to help with the trauma that I just put all these plants through okay <laughs> getting hosed down um and then just fill it up to you'll see the water level indicator right here just mm -hmm. fill it up to the max or if you're using just a net pot and an outer pot um to that one third level um and then if you want to baby it you could always put it in some form of like ICU um, and put it on top of like a seedling mat just to keep the root zone happy and kind of keep those roots engaged. Um, and then just make sure it's getting the right amount of light for that particular plant. Um, and then you'll have a, a very nice happy Lekka pot. So what about yes. pawn? Okay, much pond. smaller, much denser, definitely a different media to work with. It is. Um, and you can kind of treat it almost like uh, like soil okay. uh, with the way that you're handling it. I say that, but I've never potted in soil. So I don't, what am I talking about? Right. So, oh my God. You've got, yeah. let's choose a pond. Please one. sponsor. Okay. <laughs> Look at that, that enormous tub of them. Yeah. And, yeah. When it's full, I can't, I can't even carry it myself. It's ridiculous. Um, so first things first is you just want to, fill, um, again, just with the LECA, fill in just that bottom portion with pond. Um, so I'm it's on my just like toes, soil. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's really such a similar potting up process. It really is. Yeah. So you can see it's in there now. Um, and then, so today we're actually going to do uh, variegated hoi compacta. Um, Our favorite plant. Yes. <laughs> I oh love that plant. Is, I love it. People say it's a slow grower, but it's not. It's actually not if you put it in a lot of light. <laughs> right? Exactly. So I've cleaned these guys up um, because it's all curly and stuff. This, you know, has gotten its pesticide treatment. Um, 
And you can see here that the roots aren't as clean as if I were to put it in uh, LECA. Um, and that's for two reasons. This had such an amazing root system that I didn't want to bother it too much. I just trimmed off anything that didn't look, you know, 100%. But also, pond can be a little more forgiving when it comes to having organic media on the roots. Hmm. Um, so I would not encourage you to not rinse <laughs> your roots off. Like I okay. still assault the roots pretty, you know, pretty roughly. Um, but like I said, it's a lot more forgiving. So if you have just a little bit left on there, it's fine. Okay. Um, so what I like to do is I'll just line up the pot with these segments of compacta. Oh, those things look amazing. Are My tortellini. Great? I love a tortellini plant. Yes. So we'll do, we'll do four segments in this one. Um, and what I actually, what I like to do with anything that's being potted with potted up in pond is to kind of cramp the roots in there. Okay. Um, Cause I do that with my anthuriums. I like my anthuriums to be really snug when they're potted up. And so I've kind of just carried that over to other plants. Um, it, you know, you're going to be using less pond, less material. Um, so there's not as like high a risk of it being in saturated media. Okay. Um, so now that I have the plants in there, I'm just going to go ahead and as best as I can, hold everything in place, and then fill it in with pond. I love your little scooper. Thanks, it came with it. Oh, It came cool. with a big bucket. It's been super helpful too. I used to use, uh, back before I bought the buckets, um, I would use cups, and they work, but the directional flow in this little mm -hmm. scooper is definitely a lot more helpful. So now you're so shimmy. I just like to. So you're shimmy, mm -hmm. I shimmy, shimmy, cocoa puffing the le, the yeah. pond in and around the roots. It looks like. Yes. Okay. So we're just getting all that in there, and then again, just with any kind of stick, draw your small circles. I love this. I've um, never seen this before. I love that method. Yeah, it just helps get everything in place. I feel like with soil, you should be doing that too, because you definitely don't want air pockets. Well, with um, soil, you give a big rinse at the top. After you've potted your plant up, you give a big rinse and you let the water run out the bottom of the pot and it, it settles it the soil. Settles it. So with mm, pond okay. and Lucka, you're not doing that. So yeah. that's why this is a very interesting and cool thing to like really make sure everything's settled in. Yeah. So what I like to do, just the last step with anything that I pot up in pond is um, I take it outside and I give it a good thorough rinse. You do. Um, pond comes pre-rinsed already. However, there's still a lot of sediment in there from like when it's traveling, you know, rocks break, they make dust. Mm -hmm. um, and it doesn't hurt the plant, but it hurts my eyes. Um, <laughs> I hate looking into the reservoir and just seeing like sediment settled at the bottom. Okay. Just, I don't know why. Like I don't ever see it, but it still bothers me. Mm -hmm. So I definitely, you know, I go outside, I give it a rinse. Don't do it in your sink, guys, because that sediment will settle at the bottom of that U pipe and mm -hmm. it'll eventually block it. So take it outside, rinse okay. it. Yes. Uh, same with LECA. When you're rinsing your balls, don't do it in your sink either. Take it outside and do it. Okay. Um, but yeah, so then I'll just give this a good rinse, stick it in its outer pot, and then give it a drink of oops, Super Thrive for the first fill, and then voila. And then after that you first fill, you go into your normal nutrient routine with your whatever you're using for yes. passive hydro. With pond, I actually don't add nutrients until okay. about four to six months after I've potted, just because okay. it comes with... Um, slow release fertilizer in it already. Um, but I have seen on other accounts where people from the get-go go ahead and supplement with nutrients um, just because it's, you know, it helps. Um, but I'm, you know me, I'm always about like the easiest way possible to do things. So if I can push back out of nutrients, I'll do that for about four months. I love it. Well, yeah. this is so helpful. You make me want to go pot up even more plants right now. Yes. So thanks for this <laughs> overview. Where can everyone find you? I'm over at Enrooted Love on Instagram.
go check Kay out. She's got tons of awesome tutorials, transition videos, and just really beautiful photos of all of her oh, 200 you. plus plants all potted in Passive Hydro. Thanks, Kay. Thanks, Maria. I just think this whole thing is so interesting and I'm so thankful for Kay for number one, giving us that demonstration. Number two, doing two podcast episodes on this with me and answering all my questions. You know, I will just say personally, I in no way really know what I'm doing when it comes to semi-hydro, but it has been such a fun way for me to stay curious as a plant parent. And I know for a lot of members in our community who have also been experimenting with it alongside me, it's just been a beautiful way to get curious and and continue just to expand my mind as a plant parent and understand things differently. You know, once I started propagating plants in LECA, after I did an experiment, which you can check out on how to propagate Raffi, my Raffidophora tetrasperma, in all sorts of different substrates, it really got me thinking about roots differently. And I don't know, I just think this whole thing has been a really fun experience and it's really expanded my, my knowledge of plant care. So make sure if you're curious about semi-hydro, you absolutely must go follow Kay at InRootedLove on Instagram. She is amazing. Her plants are to die for. <laughs> I'm jealous of her whole collection and also she has adorable children that sometimes make appearances as well. And if you're interested on maybe figuring out what plants, projects, or educational resources are for are perfect for you and your lifestyle, I highly suggest taking the Bloom and Grow Plant Parent Personality Test. It's a three minute free test. You take it and you get your plant parent personality and you get a list of curated plants, projects, and educational resources that are catered exactly to your lifestyle. So it's not what's the best beginner plant for any person across the board. It's what the right what's the right beginner plant for you, what's the right next level plant for you, and maybe what are some fun DIY projects that you can do to keep blooming and keep growing. So check it out in the show notes if you are interested. I hope we all just stay curious and keep blooming and keep growing. And if you're not interested in semi-hydro, absolutely don't do it. But if you are, please let me know in the comments how you're experimenting with it. And maybe if you're not experimenting with it, but you're experimenting with something else that's bringing you joy and keeping you curious, I want to know because I probably want to do it too. So let me know in the comments. And thank you again for being a plant friend and liking this video and clicking subscribe. Until next time, my sweet plant friends, keep blooming and keep growing. Doom doom doo 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 doo